Is Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian unfilmable? Well, today I'll be answering that question definitively by exploring all the different avenues that it could be turned into a movie or a TV show. So to answer the first question, is Blood Meridian filmable? I think it is. I think that without too much effort from just your typical modern Western director, Taylor Sheridan, John Hilko, even the Coen brothers, they could do a good Blood Meridian movie. However, I don't want just a good movie if we are going to do this. I want an absolute masterpiece. I want it to reach the energy of Apocalypse Now by Francis Ford Coppola. I don't want to settle for not being able to have the darkness and the violence and all of that and have to deal with some BS like James Franco was trying to give us. And we'll get into some of the directorial arguments later about who should do it, who I think could do it. But before we get into that, we need to look at the time constraints. So if we are talking about a movie, it could probably be maybe two and a half hours at most, three if we're lucky. And if it's a miniseries, obviously anywhere from eight to 12 hours. The miniseries would be much easier to film. Who knows if it would have as big of a budget. But the time constraints are important because the plot of Blood Meridian is very interesting for filmability. Because until the Comanche attack happens, which for sure happens after page 50, if not closer to page 70 or 80, not that much is going on in the story. We are getting introduced to the kid. He's visiting the hermit. He meets the judge. He starts going out with the um, with the, the army and looking around. But is all is that all very exciting? It's not on its face. Once again, if it's done by a typical director, it won't be very good, and they may have to skip over that. But it's such an integral part of the story because of the oncoming darkness. We are introduced to the kid. Some of the archetypal elements and the archon elements are explored. We are introduced to the judge, to the Southwest, to all these different things. And so one of the stipulations that I think that this needs that would turn Blood Meridian into a masterpiece would be that someone who could capture the surreal and archetypal elements of the movie. And that becomes even harder if you are limited to two and a half hours. I think just leaving this as a Western and not bringing in special effects and psychedelic stuff and would be a huge mistake. And when I look at James Franco's test footage and what they were doing out there, just dressed normally, and it's not that, I know it's test footage, but it, I know it wouldn't have been that high definition and not with crazy special effects. I think that would be a mistake. To really capture a lot of the battle scenes, like the Comanche scene and obviously all the archetypal judge stuff and the ending, I would really like to see someone who can push this more into a Western science fiction zone so it really pops for the readers on the screen. In the text, it pops out to us that that's what's going on. But in the movie, it has to be more than subtle. I've heard people call and say that there, you know, certain directors can show the underlying darkness. That's not what we need here. I would say this needs to be manifest, also knowing that the kid maybe has a connection to the Thamalamai kid, and he really is this archonic, archetypal energy. Let me know down in the comments if you think that that would be a mistake to really personify that energy outward in the film, then rather than just show it through the actions of the character. Also, Blood Meridian shirts, links down in the description below. I have a red version. This is the white version. There are a couple other super cool Blood, uh, excuse me, Cormac McCarthy shirts if you are interested. But bringing that dark energy out is important because when we think about the dialogue between the judge and the kid, or when the, the judge is doing monologues or whatever, do we want to be a we're just at the campfire and the judge is talking or the judge is at the bar and he's talking and saying these epic lines. Or would we want it to be more dramatic and having elements, some surreal or psychedelic elements involved? Because when I read it, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing like waves of darkness and waves of things happening around the judge and within the situation. This isn't a true story. Obviously, the Glanton gangs are the Glanton gang is here, but this is bigger than that. This is a critique and a analysis of the West and, and and Mexico and everything that was going on there and the innate inherent condition of human violence. So it seems that like it seems like it would have to be a TV show if they were going to take that angle though because to explore that angle in full would require time with the hermit to kind of set the mood and to really get introduced to the judge and showing sunsets on the Sonoran and Chihuahua desert. While a Western, you know, a typical Western, something like what James Franco, James Franco was going to do, but you know, just obviously way better. I think the pacing could move fast enough to get through a lot of the main points. And then at the end, you know, keep things pretty normal. Then at the end of the film, kind of get things more psychedelic. Because obviously at the end of the book, 
that's where things you can't really deny it anymore. How you know, how is someone going to personify that, especially if they've never done it before? So now before we get into some other things, like I said, the some of the picks I have for the Western angle are Taylor Sheridan. And I'm up on the fence on this one for sure, because I honestly haven't liked a lot of his stuff past the point of like, oh, this is good. But everyone was telling me, watch Sicario, Sicario, Sicario. So I watched it. And then I realized once the movie was done that he helped write the screenplay for the movie and didn't direct the movie. I've been told that by four different people about Taylor Sheridan. And when I respond, I'm like, I don't think he can really capture like the darkness. They say Sicario. And I watched the movie and I don't think it really, it captures it a little bit. And the director of that was Dennis V. And I guess we could get into that now. A candidate who I think could actually pull off the movie and maybe get the archetypal elements in there is Dennis V. I don't know how to say his last name. He is the one. Uh, he just filmed Dune. He, he's doing the Dune series right now. Watching the Dune series and how a lot of that is manifest, how he captured the Dune book and the energy of it, even with having to deal with Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya and like Jason Momoa, like kind of a crew of actors that aren't, in my opinion, even anywhere close to the talent they need for those positions. He made it into a very, very good movie. And we're seeing that he knows how to depict the desert very well. So I, so I guess I'll just spoil that right now that he is my number one pick over someone like Taylor Sheridan. Dennis with the Dune series right now is showing us how to depict the desert. I have grown up in the desert. I've spent 30 years of my life in the desert. And the way he is doing it is very beautiful and a lot on the more psychedelic side. And I understand that has to do with the spice and the psychedelic elements of that, but that's the same thing with Blood Meridian. So another person who comes up in my mind are the Coen brothers. Obviously they did a very good job with no country, no country for old men. However, I just rewatched No Country for Old Men, and I think it captures something very good. They really brought the page to life. But in No Country for Old Men, there it, it it's going to require a lot less interpretation and skill because first of all, No Country for Old Men was a screenplay, then it got turned into a book, and it's a very typical and straightforward plot. And if you reduce a lot of the time and a lot of the symbolic stuff and the boring stuff that happened in the book. You can make it an action-packed movie. People understand it. There's lost money. There's a bounty hunter trying to find it. This random guy gets it. He has some skills. He's a hunter, but he's pursued by this ultimate evil. But in Blood Meridian, we're dealing with multiple archetypal Nietzschean and crazy forces. The, the Coen brothers, I've seen a lot of their Westerns. I've never seen them pull off a major battle scene before. There are some major battle scenes and some horrific stuff that happens in Blood Meridian. And I didn't see it in the Ballad of Western, of West, excuse me, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs or True Grit. Another person I could dream pick would obviously be uh, Francis Ford Coppola. That would be absolutely insane. I know he's already 84 years old and he wants, I think, complete his Heart of Darkness film before he dies and that's what he's really fundraising for but apocalypse now type feeling that's what i'm imagining with blood meridian more so so my top pick i think for someone to direct the blood meridian movie is robert eggers i don't know if anyone out here has seen the lighthouse the witch and the and recently the northman but they capture all the elements of what blood meridian needs all three are historical films and i think almost all of them take place before the 19th century so the passion for history is there and the passion for research and to learn the area. And for instance, in The Northman, the violence and the fight scenes are insane. He will for sure be able to pull off the Comanche attack, like something we've never seen and be able to add that dark tint to it because he's done it before. I don't want to bring a director in that's never done this before, that we're hoping can do this and has been able to pull this off. I don't want this to be the last season of Game of Thrones and we're just hoping that the director knows how to do the final battle between the, you know, the Ice King and the, and the humans. The Northmen, the Witch, and the Lighthouse also capture deep character elements in like the occult side of things. That's going to be a big part of this. And being able to pull that up and out from Toadvine, from the Glanton gang, is something he's already done before in situations working with a lot less. All right, so that is one of my main choices, I think, is Robert Eggers for either. I think he could even pull it off as a movie. So another interesting pick is Quentin Tarantino. Even though he's doing one last film, I don't think, like I said, I don't think he's ever been able to capture a lot of the main elements that we would need in this movie. But his ability to shift eras and do things would make it really funny and really good. All And if it really was his last movie, it would be insane. I've seen Ridley Scott be mentioned a lot. I don't think Ridley Scott is trustworthy at all. I mean, I'd be interested to see how his Napoleon movie is but his films in general have always been a hit or miss and judging from a lot of the, the stuff I've seen similar to Blood Marie and absolutely no and we haven't mentioned this yet about the unfilmability but could the violence actually be shown on screen could there be 
penises, black penises, you know, because they're withered, hanging around people's necks, and the violent, you know, violence, excuse me, I guess on HBO, but a lot of the violence is white men doing it against minorities, the scalping and raping of indigenous people of, you know, northern Mexico and southern, the, you know, um, North, you know, just, I guess, say North America. If it got big and if it, you know, came out from a big productions company like Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers, it would cause so many problems and there would be issues about McCarthy. I mean, we're in a different era. No Country for Old Men in the Road were right before things kind of blew up. McCarthy hasn't been canceled yet, but his use, for instance, of the N-word, of underage girls, of, you know, just violence in general against, you know, a lot of different groups— I think would cause a lot of problems in the media and maybe even make people hesitant to take this up with that a project that's so violent and involves so much so many of those elements, you know, killing people, violence against underage women. I'm pretty sure the book drops the N-word a bunch. And apparently John Hillcoat got the right to do it. And or it was said that Cormac McCarthy and him figured out a way to adapt Blood Meridian, and he's just ready to do it, and that McCarthy would even do the screenplay for it. That report was from years ago, but judging with how the road went, you know, he put music in the road. There was a score during the apocalypse of happy and weird and music. Anyway, so the other part is we need the actors. We need the budget. Like, who is going to play the judge? Who is going to be able to step up and do this? Obviously, like, Daniel Day-Lewis or Marlon Brand, you know, not Marlon Brando anymore, but, like, could maybe pull off the Marlon Brando and Apocalypse Now energy that we need. Like Marlon Brando and Apocalypse Now would be the, if you just transplant him to be the judge, that would be the perfect character. But how do we find some, how do we find someone with that energy? And there are ways around this because, you know, a lot of the Blood Meridian, a lot of the deep points that we want, you know, there's the violence. Oh my God. But then there's just these light, this dialogue. And how are we going to depict that? Once again, is it just going to be the straight dialogue or is it going to be more psychedelic because that actually depends that actually determines who the actor is going to be you could get a lesser actor in there someone who just kind of looks the part and can kind of pull it off and you could dub a lot of the crazy lines you could take us on some psychedelic vision or vision quest as he's saying some of the more epic lines of blood meridian he doesn't have to be just saying them out of his mouth over a campfire once again or at the bar and do we make the judge a human do we leave him as a human or do we make him bigger do we personify him into something more like throughout the whole thing like do we take that whole angle you know hopefully looking better than what we see on the screen right now so then like how do we tell people the story and some of the deeper elements do we have an omnipotent narrator reading over the throughout the course of the the program and i think that's a bad idea i think that's cheesy we've seen that done in movies ad infinitum and i never think that goes well when we have this narrator saying over the over the horizon you know that's not going to work and even crazier i think that this could actually be turned into an animated series much better i mean this will never happen and this will make people mad out there but this could be be personified and captured and done much easier with much much more success if this was animated. I honestly have watched, you know, maybe 10 anime series in my life and you know whatever cartoons I've watched in my life, you know, a decade or two ago. But that's always a wild card choice with something that you don't want to see screwed up because no one really gets mad. You just you don't need to worry about the actors or these things or the time. You could have it go for seasons and be able to get through everything you know would Cormac McCarthy or whoever owns the rights right now give them give a company the rights to do do that probably not another thing I've thought of is you could depict the judge and like his problems through an unfolding thing he could start off as innocent he could start off as this individual maybe that's not as bad but eventually like that's what kind of happens in the book like that's one of the things we see in the book toward the conclusion at the end but you kind of understand the whole time that like things aren't great like there's trouble brewing with the judge and so the judge is a great oxymoron because he is so civil and smart and intelligent while doing all these barbarous things. And we could slowly start to unveil some more of that darkness and some maybe less of less civility before we reach the final clim climactic scene. And so now to conclude, I want to we should hear Cormac McCarthy's take on this. He said, in respect to being uh, Blood Meridian being unfilmable, infilmable, he says, quote, that's all crap. The fact that it's bleak and bloody, a bloody story has nothing to do with whether or not you can put it on the screen. That's not the issue. The issue is it would be very difficult, it would be very difficult to do and require someone with a bountiful imagination and a lot of balls, but the payoff could be extraordinary. So I think No Country for Old Men was a less risky pick and, and you know, obviously got the bounty of an Academy Award. He also said, you know, just to, 
hear a little bit more about film. He said about all the, the all the pretty horses adaption. Quote: It could have been better. As it stands today, it could have been cut and made into a pretty good movie. The director had the notion that he could put the entire book on the screen. Well, you can't do that. You have to pick out the story that you want and tell and put that on the screen. And so he made this four hour film, and then when he found out it was actually going to get released, he would have to cut it down to two hours. He also says about movie, just movies, quote, just the appalling, app- appalling volume of artifacts like movies will erase all meaning that they could ever possibly have. But we probably won't get that far anyway. So obviously we have McCarthy's very negative attitude when it comes to this stuff. So what do you guys think out there? Do you think that Blood Meridian is filmable? Would you like to see it? Could it be done in, uh, as a film, as a TV show? Who do you think should be the actors, the director? Would you be happy with just seeing a good one? Would you see it if we already all knew that it was just going to be uh, another movie like The Road or All the Pretty Horses? Would you just go see it to see it? I don't know. Tell me all your thoughts down below. And thank you guys for watching this video and being a part of this growing Cormac McCarthy community. Peace.